Welcome to this Pastel My Business online webinar. In today's webinar, we will be, we will be addressing how to create, manage, and invite users to your company in My Business Online. The great thing about My Business Online is the ability that you have to access your data from anywhere in the world and any time. And with this, you have the ability to allow other users to access your data as well. So no more backing up your data and sending your data to your accountant. You can simply invite your accountant or even another employee or sales consultant, and in this way, double processing can, can be avoided, therefore saving you time. Let me show you how this is done. Once you log into your My Business Online, you'll automatically go to your home screen. I'm just waiting for it to refresh on your side. Okay, then you'll go to administration and manage users. As you'll see, as you go to manage users, you'll automatically see all the current users on your system. If you would like to add an additional user, you'll go add users. And then it will require you to fill in the information of the certain user. In My Business Online, you get two types of users. If you create the company, you are the owner of the company. And if you get an invite to the company, then you are known as a user. Okay, so we're going to set up the first user. can just start completing the first name, surname, and then email address. The email address has to be correct due to the fact that once you save this, it will automatically send an activation email to the certain user to basically confirm the account. So let me just put that in. Okay, you can put in a comment, let's say, um, I should only be active. So only invoicing allowed. Okay, then you can put in a telephone number for the relevant user. And then also a mobile number if that is required. You can also Activate, well, you can also put in notes on the system, which basically allows you to, um, let's say, certain periods you'd want someone to be off, or at certain periods this person has to comply with a certain action. So therefore, you can enter notes in there. Once that's done, you can push Save. Okay, so you would, just waiting for it to refresh on your side. Okay, so it will bring up a screen that says you're allowing access to the specific user. And when you initially set up a user, you'll see that this user has full permissions to the company. But I'm going to show you how to restrict it if you would like to do that on certain users. So you'd say, okay, granted. Okay, then basically what you'll see is you'll see all your users again. Then on the status, there'll be a pending activation due to the fact that this user first needs to confirm the activation. I've just basically created a screen for you to see the type of email that you'll get as a user. Just waiting for it to refresh on your side. Okay, this is the email that you'll receive, an automated email, which will address you and then basically there'll be a link, the first link, for you to activate your account. There'll also be a user, your username, which will be your email address, and a password. This password is a temporary password that you can use. So once you log into the system as a user, you can change this. Just 
Just waiting for your screen to refresh on your side. Okay, so basically I've added my user now, but like I said, the user I add, added, I only want that person to have permissions on certain things. So what I'll do is I'll go to administration and then control user access. You'll see all my companies will be listed there. And then also the selected company, which is Beads a lot. You'll see on my current users, I have two, which will be the user currently activated and then me as an administrator. If I would like to add more users to that side of my existing users, all I need to do is simply select that person. and then drag that person over until I basically see a green tick and then I'll basically drop it into there. And then you'll see automatically that person is now also user on that company. For each company you'd be able to open it and then see all your current users that have access to it. So if you don't want a certain user to have access to it, you'll see a minus red sign on the right hand side which you can basically select. So currently you'll see there's a user, I can just deselect it and that user will disappear. Currently I want to set my permissions, so what I'll do is on that screen you'll see there's a permissions option, so I'll select the permissions. waiting for the screen to come up on my side. Still just waiting for it on my side quickly. Okay, so once you've basically selected that, you'll see that it brings up certain areas that you can allow access to. So if I want to on the accountants area, I can basically untick on that. Just give me a second quickly, I just want to access that screen again. Please feel free to ask, um, ask any questions. You can just type it on the bottom right and then during the webinar I'll be addressing that. Okay, so once you basically allow a user, you want to restrict what this user can do, you'll see, you'll go to the permission screen and you'll see all the relevant fields. So what you can do is basically, if you just want this person to do inv invoicing, you'd basically untick the um, accountant's area. On the account side, you can also deselect that. On the banking side, you'd also then deselect that. You'll see, you can basically scroll down on each selection, you know, to go to, down to very simple things on what you can do. So we don't either want banking. What you can do is on the company side. I should like to find out, apparently I am breaking up, um, can you guys just give me an indication whether you can hear me?
Okay, I'm getting a response that some of you guys can hear me. That's perfect. Okay, great. Then let's continue. Okay, so let's say on the company setups, you don't either want access there. You'll also, on a customer side, you would want to give the person access to the customer, so you'd leave that ticked then. But I mean, you, like, I, like I said, you can basically scroll down completely on what you want this person to do. So if it comes to deleting, if you only want a person to add stuff and not delete stuff, you can always go and de deselect the delete option. And then same with your dashboard. If you don't want people to see your bank account automatically when they log in, you can also go and restrict that and what they can see on the screen. So as you can see with My Business Online, you can basically restrict exactly. So you can invite a user and restrict what this person can see and can do. In that way, you manage your company from where you are as well. As well, the functionality that you have as well, if, if you are from your side the only person doing the invoicing or even if you have numerous users, you can also go to your accountant area, invite your accountant, which will also bring up a user screen. So you, same process as we did previously, you'd add another user and then start completing the information. Okay, remember that email address must always be correct due to the fact that we send an automated email to that person's email address. I've got a question from Frederick. He asked, can only the owner change between the business or is this a setting to allow a user to switch as well? If, if you give a user permission to numerous companies, so let's say you have about three companies, then what you'd basically do is add that user to each of those accounts. So automatically as they log into their My Business Online through their username and password, they will basically have an option of the three companies or two companies, whatever it might have been that you've given them access to. And then from there they'd be able to process. Does that answer your question, Frederick? Perfect. Okay. Let's continue then. Okay. So now we're adding our accountant. So what is nice about it is basically you don't need your accountant to come to your office anymore. Basically, your accountant can sit at their offices, get all the information that they need to complete your financial year or whether it be your returns. So for comment screen, you can maybe say where this accountant comes from. So let's just say accountants everywhere. That's the accounting firm. Maybe just a note, maybe you might have a bookkeeper and an accountant that assist you throughout the year. Okay, and then you'll put in a relevant telephone number. And then also my mobile number if required. You can also put in notes. So let's say basically you can put in notes that the accountant needs a certain date on where they need to log in or what it is that they need to do. You can put notes on there as well. Once that is done, you can basically say save. Okay, as it says there, a valid email address. So let me just complete that. And then I'll say save. Okay. And as you'll see again, it will bring up that screen and it says um, this person will be granted access to your current company and will be given full permissions. So if I want to restrict that accountant to only certain fields within my program, I can go administration and control user access. You'll see currently that person is already added there. If let's say I want to access another company of mine, I'll go and deselect the company. or go select the relevant company. It says just waiting for it to refresh on your side. It will say um, you'll lose any unsafe changes, okay, but I've basically saved everything I have done, so I will continue. So yes. Then you'll see on that current company of mine, I have no users. It's only me as an administrator. If I want to take the accountant that I just created, 
select the accountant and then from there drag it over like I said until you see that green tick you can basically drop it and that's where I'll go and select permissions Okay, so it tells me first to save it, which is perfect. Okay, and then I'll go and select that company again. Then I'll go and set up my permissions. And like I said, because it's the accountant, I only maybe want, the, the main thing is to always have your accountant, well, to give you, grant your accountant access to everything within your company. But if I don't want that, then basically I can go and deselect everything and only allow that accountant to my accountant area. And from there I can save it. Okay, and then basically your permissions will be set up then. So if my accountant logs in, they'll only be able to go to the accountant's area screen and go and process things on there. If I give them access to more stuff, then they will be able to do the processing. So from your side, you can control it completely as a main owner of the company. Is there any questions um, that I can assist with? or Because, I mean, that's almost the end of the webinar. We've basically addressed anything. So if you want to ask me any other questions regarding the users or adding users, please feel free to type anything in now. Okay, I see there's no questions coming up, so I assume that's let me just have a look. I should make sure that there is no questions. Okay, I've got a question again from Frederick. Not sure if I did not set it up correctly, but my users cannot see the my accountant link on top. Okay, the thing is, Frederick, um, he also said this, he, this the, the user cannot, for instance, pay for my monthly subscription. You, as the main owner, would be the one, the main holder of that account. So the certain person would only be a user. So you'd need to go into my account and follow the steps, basically, when making that payment as an administrator. Your user will not be able to do that due to the fact that it's only a user. So that's why the, the, the user can't make payment for you. Does that answer on that side? Okay, great. Any other questions from anyone else? Okay, I'll give it a few more seconds. Okay, I've got a question from Heidi. We as company just registered to make use of my business online. Our accountant used Pastel for quite some time now. Will she be able to join our two systems? Okay, Heidi, um, let me quickly have a look. I just want to rephrase your question, just read over it, just to make sure that I answer each part of it. Heidi, your, your user, your accountant will be able to have access to your system. You just simply need to invite her. Um, either you can go through the invite my accountant option or otherwise just invite her as or him as a simple user. 
once you invite this person as a user, if you've got two companies, you can basically give um, your accountant access to both of those companies and then if you want to put up restrictions then you can do that on there. Um, if, if you're referring to on the Pastel side and my business online side, those two programs aren't linked. So whether your accountant's working currently on the Pastel desktop version, that won't affect the my business online version. Does that answer it, Heidi? Okay, I'll wait for Heidi just to give me a response if that's been dealt with. Okay, then I've got a, a question from Magrit. Magrit basically said, is there a minimum to my users? Magrit, from your side, you can basically go up to five users. However, if you do require more users, you're more than welcome to give us a call on 011-304. 3805 and basically what we can do is from our side we can allow you additional users if you need more than the required five. I've got another question from Frederick um, regarding a question as uh, regarding the mobile app for Android phones. At the moment, um, Frederick, you'll see that we do have an iPhone app. However, there isn't as yet for the Android due to the fact that the screens on on those are quite small. I mean, we haven't really looked at an app as yet. We've, we've purely just um, created the app for the iPhone side. But I think as we go along, we'll probably have a look at, you know, getting it on the Androids, um, all of those phones as well. So as we do go along, they'll definitely be moved towards something like that. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, Heidi, once um, you basically invite your accountant, have a look. This, you shouldn't encounter any problems, but yeah, if you need any assistance, and basically to everyone, if you've got any support queries or you need assistance with the program, you're more than welcome to um, give our support team a call. The number for the My Business um, is 011-304-3805. And they'll be able to assist you with any questions you might have. Otherwise, if you've got any suggestions, similar to Frederick, if you've got any suggestions similar to what you just mentioned there, you're more than welcome to email suggestions at pastel.co.za. And what will happen is that will go straight to our development team and they'll actually go through certain questions that do come up often and maybe look at you know putting that in the next build or whatever it might be. If there's any, I'm, I'm going to give it a few more minutes, so by all means, if there are any questions, please do let me know. Okay, let me just quickly go through the steps again, just to add your users, just a quick on that. Basically, you'll log into your company as the, the owner of the company. Go to Administration, Manage Users, select Add Users, complete all the information. Remember that email address needs to be valid due to the fact that you get an activation email to just authorize it and then also a temporary password which you can change as soon as you log in as a user. Once you've basically put in the user, you'll go to administration, control user access, and from there you'd be able to go and set the permissions on a certain person. If you don't want a person to be there, remember, you can just basically click on the red circle and just remove that person automatically that person will move to the left hand side of the screen. And similar, if you want to move someone to a certain company, you'll need to drag it from the left hand side over to the right hand side. Always ensure though where the tick is on the certain company that you're adding the correct user to your company. 
Once you've set the permissions, basically that person will be able to log in and do the processing that is required. I see that there's no more questions. I'd like to thank everyone for attending the webinar today. Just give me a second, I see I have another question. Um, another question for Frederick, is there an option to add a signature to the email that you sent with your, in with your invoice? Um, is this basically when you're sending an email, so basically you're setting up an, a tax invoice and basically from there you're directly emailing it to the clients? Is, I think that's what you're basically asking. Frederick, what you could basically do is, due to the fact that there is an option, let me just quickly go to that. Just give me a second. Just waiting for it to refresh on your side. Okay, I'm just going to print that one. Sorry about that. Just redo that. Edits. Select. Okay, so I'm just doing an invoice that I've already created. Select email. You'll see basically it will automatically, just waiting for it to refresh on your side. Okay, so automatically you'll have the um, recipient that you're sending it to. You can CC or BC anyone you'd like to, and then also the tax invoice will be attached. Frederick, if you would like to add your signature, there is a message spacing in there. So what you could do is maybe from your actual signature on your email, you could just go and copy and then paste it into here. So automatically, if you do send it, that will be attached to it. Well, not attached, but in the, the body of the message. Does that answer your question, Frederick? Okay, I see there's no more messages, so I'd like to thank everyone for coming through today. Thank you for joining us for this My Business Online webinar. If you found it useful, please visit the PASTEL website to find out about future My Business Online webinars or training courses. Alternatively, contact us on sales at pastelmybusiness.co.za.